Hi everybody, Laura Donna here with Life Mod Solutions. I'm here today to tell you about the causes of a bloated stomach. Number one, sugar, okay? When we have a wrong imbalance of bacteria in our digestive system, they ferment the sugars and they create gas within our GI system and it just gets trapped and it gets stuck. Number two is alcohol consumption. Again, sugar is usually tied to this. And alcohol causes something called leaky gut syndrome. It adds a lot of stress to the small intestines, making the cell wall very leaky, and things get in that should into the bloodstream that shouldn't, and things that are supposed to stay out and be eliminated via stool. It's just this big mess that happens and causes stress in the, in the digestive system. The next thing is high levels of stress. When we are in fight or flight, our cortisol is released. That turns off our healing pathways because our body goes into survival mode. In order to heal, you need to be relaxed and you need to be rested. When you're relaxed and rested, you can digest your food better. So if you're constantly stressed out, you're eating on the go, you're eating while you're driving, you're not sitting when you're eating, you're not chewing your food very well, these, this adds stress to your body as well. Num the next one, antibiotic use, probably one of the biggest culprits in the causes of bloating. Antibiotics not only kill bad bacteria, but they kill the good bacteria in our stomach. And so the only guys that are left are the strong and the virulent ones. And those are the ones that we don't want in our GI system. So antibiotics create this huge imbalance in our gut bacteria. On top of that, when the gut bacteria come down, all the other critters that live in our system start to have their own playground. Okay, now we have issues where we have something um, called, well, first of all, the bacteria imbalance is called SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth, a lot of gas, belching, bloating. The next thing that can happen after antibiotic use is something called CFO, small intestine fungal overgrowth. When you bring down the bacterial population, now you're having an overgrowth of yeast in candida and they can cause bloating and digestive discomfort, dis digestive discomfort and leaky gut syndrome. Again, antibiotic use, because this imbalance is starting to happen with the bacteria and the, and the fungus and the candida, you're also running the risk of having something called SIPO, right? This is parasites. Parasites can also be a cause of malabsorption, digestive discomfort, and bloating. Okay, so antibiotic use we get from taking antibiotics when we're sick from the doctor. If you're eating non-organic meat or you're eating out at restaurants, unfortunately about 70% of the antibiotic use in the United States is used on animals and livestock. So when you're eating your non-organic meats every single day, you're getting small doses of antibiotics in your food. You don't even realize it. The next is chlorine exposure. So we think of chlorine like in swimming pools, but there's also chlorine in our tap water supply and in our municipal water supplies. They put that in there because it's for another way to call it an antibiotic. It kills microbes in the water supply. While it was a necessary addition to our water supply, you know, it is now causing further gut imbalance. So never drink tap water. You're always gonna wanna use filtered water and do not rely on your fridge filters. You're gonna wanna get some advanced filter systems. At minimum, use like the Brita's and the Zero Waters, but there are better ones out there. We can cover that in a later video. The next thing is processed foods. Number one, you're not feeding your gut bacteria the right food that it needs to thrive. And so processed foods contain a lot of sugars, they contain a lot of chemicals, and they contain preservatives. Preservatives is another word for antibiotic, okay? We're preventing the growth of microbes. So processed foods, wrong food, and chemicals are the issue there. So it causes an imbalance in the gut bacteria, leading to bloating. The next thing is birth control. So there's some studies out there that talk about the, the changes of estro low estrogen and low progesterone causes changes in the different bacteria that live in our gut bellies. So our gut bellies, our gut bacteria. So there's still some more data that needs to come out around that, but that's something to consider that if you're on birth control and you come off and you're noticing gut changes, maybe this could be your culprit for you. Next is lack of sleep. Sleep is where we do memory storage, healing, detoxification, everything is done while we're sleeping. And if we're not resting well, 
then our body is always in a stressed response, right? We talked about when you're in a restful state, you digest better. So we want to make sure that we're getting a solid night of sleep. The next thing is cigarettes. I think that we all know that cigarettes are no longer good for us and we should be avoiding them, just too many chemicals and toxins. And then there's also a particular food group out there called sugar alcohols, okay? We use sugar alcohols in uh, like sugar-free products. So these are things like xylitol, erythritol, sorbitol, and mannitol. Um, these are fermentable fibers, and this means that our gut bacteria breaks it down in our belly and it releases gas and it gets stuck and trapped in our bellies. You'll also hear um, there something called the FODMAPs. These are different fermentable fibers that appear in foods. So these sugar alcohols are, are part of the polyols. That's the P in the FODMAP. So while following a FODMAP diet can help you in the short term when it comes to gas and bloating, it is not recommended long term. Um, we don't want to be restricting our diet, and we'll talk about things about restrict diet restriction later on and about how that's negative for gut health as well. So I hope you learned a little bit about this information. Stay tuned, like this video, share it with friends, follow my page because we're going to dive into these topics individually um, in later videos that are going to help you support you um, on how to work through this and how to help yourself get better um, by once you understanding the causes, now we can start looking at solutions. Okay, thanks for tuning in guys. You have a great day.